Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and today we are taking a peek at these Savage Shores from Vault Comics. This is written by Ram V and illustrated by Sumit Kumar and coloring by Vittorio Astone and lettered by Aditya Vidikar, which I'm pretty sure I butchered completely, so apologies on that. So what the heck is the Savage Shores? First off, uh, actually two things. First, uh, this is my third attempt at making this video, so yay. And two, uh, this book was extremely hyped in 2019 and it made people's top list of books to read that year. So I was really interested when I first learned about that book, but again, I, I, I get books extremely late uh, on purpose and I read them even later. So 2020, here we are and I've finally read The Savage Shores. So I made the video three times. So I've tried talking about this book and it was uh, gnawing at me because I couldn't get it right. I couldn't get what I wanted to say about this book. I want to be as candid, real, and truthful as possible. Uh, the Savage Shores is a fascinating read, but it did confuse me when I first started reading it. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I do know that there is mythology and folklore and like vampires and stuff, so that was one of the main appeals. Obviously, obviously the art was the second one, because the art is freaking amazing, and we'll go over that in a second. But the story was really fascinating, but uh, I wasn't aware that if you're not one of those uh, history junkies or uh, history buffs, some of, the, uh, some of the things that get discussed in this book just flew past my head. I, I needed to do some research and, and read up on the time period. Uh, 1766 and the East Indian Company. I do know what everything is, but you know, I, I don't uh, live and breathe by these things, so I, I completely forgot some terminology and a lot of the characters. But that's the beauty of books like this, where Ramvi is able to take uh, his history and create a historical fiction type book. Uh, a lot of people, I'm seeing online a lot of people saying, like, this is sort of an urban adult fantasy and I get what they're going for but I see it more as historic fiction mixed with like gothic-esque horror even though the timelines don't match but you, you know what I mean by that uh, there are a lot of moody scenes and the dialogue is freaking rich as hell I love it uh, there is a lot of exposition dialogue in this series for the characters speaking through letters, which is a fun way to do it, because you're informing the audience, or your readers, I should say, of what's happening, but it doesn't seem too on the nose. Like, it's not him or her telling the reader, like, oh, this is what I'm thinking. No, it's usually a character writing a letter to another important character, and you learn about the situation that India finds, finds itself at the start of this book and the horrible uh, East India Company, which I guess you could say is one of the world's first big corporations. And it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows, they really did some messed up stuff. And the book goes into explaining, or not necessarily explaining, but giving you an insight about the effects of colonialism and oppression of uh, one country to another and all that stuff and of course seeing the people in India uh, you know fighting for control and fighting to appease the uh, British Empire but at the same time rebel against all that stuff it was really fascinating and I don't think I can do the book justice because my videos tend to be spoiler free so if any of that intrigues you do pick up this book. These Savage Shores is a fantastic read, but in the backdrop of all this uh, historical uh, hijinks that are ensuing, uh, there is a fantasy aspect to it. There is this vampiric story, if you will. When the story first begins, there is this character that turns out to be a vampire. He's running from uh, the law in England, and his 
vampire buddies, which run the scene, or I should say, run everything behind the scenes, they send them away with the uh, company, the East Indian Company, to sort of hide away and, and, you know, lay low for a bit. Over there, he finds out, you know what, he's not top dog. Turns out there are uh, bigger teeth out there. And we get to meet our one of our protagonists, the character of Bishan. And I, I'm sorry if I'm saying these names incorrectly. Bishan is an immortal, a Rakshas, which is basically a humanoid, vampiric humanoid demon that eats people. An Asian version of a vampire. So you meet this character and his relationship to a prince and his relationship to this girl called Cory and several other characters. And what soon follows in the five issues is a beautiful romance between these two characters, Bishan and Cory, where, you know, setting the scene in India gives it such a lush, beautiful backdrop and the scenes just look gorgeous, especially when they're next to the big ass trees. Uh, I, I love those scenes and uh, the writing on that stuff and the interactions between Bishan and Cory are really spectacular and really lovely. And Cory is sort of the unsung hero of the whole thing because what the things that happen to that character, you could say they are a massive take on the country itself, if you know what I am referring to. So it's a really interesting big metaphor for the state of things. And yeah, that's in a nutshell what the story is about. This vampire comes in and uh, Bishan uh, encounters this vampire and we soon learn that, you know, the vampires are running things behind the scenes and there's a lot of political play. Bishan is protecting this prince who his dad uh, died and there is this political struggle with the sultan, the current sultan who's trying to eat up the remainder of the prince's lands, if I remember correctly. And again, this is where I lack the knowledge, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I encourage everyone to do research on this time period because it is fascinating. And you see sort of like the warring states, if you will, and them, you know, going for that political grab and war between uh, different, I want to say cities or gosh i'm probably butchering this uh between the different areas let's just say that much i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be, be uh, corrected on that <laughs> but still the first impressions i got from the book uh are just fantastic this is a really well written book a fascinating story and for five issues it really seems like it's jam-packed uh, it, it's a lengthy trade. It's not uh, one of those skinny Marvel books, if you will, uh, trade paperbacks. The artwork on this thing is freaking badass and one of my favorite things I've read in a while. The art on this uh, from Kumar is just breathtaking. There is this scratchy, grungy look to the artwork that uh, reminded me of uh, Manifest Destiny over at Image Comics or uh, Matteo Scalera's artwork where you see a lot of influences from American comics, Euro comics, and even manga all mixed in and it creates such a treat to the eyes. The character designs are really well done the color palette and the color sensibilities are fantastic. Stuff like the London scene where it's all moody and, and bluish tones and dark and even some greenish uh, hues thrown in there. And then you switch it up to the scenes in India and it's all yellows and bright colors and the lush backgrounds. It just lends itself to an epic experience when you're reading it. Aside from what I said at the beginning where you have this vampire arriving in India, after something eventful happens in the first issue, uh, all the things that bump in the night take note of what has happened, and you start to see a 
uh, shift towards the supernatural being involved with the political and how the two, uh, without knowing uh, how the two influence each other's and there are, uh, you know, the wars that are and battles that are happening at that time period mixed in with the vampiric society, I guess, from England and how they are influencing things behind the scenes and how they want to uh, get revenge and all that stuff. So it's a real cool way to do historical fiction, but you're, uh, the, the plots are interwoven is what I'm trying to get at. Also, the plot has a really fantastic way of examining one character and then flowing into another pretty seamlessly. There's a smooth transition between issues. It just looks and reads fantastic in my opinion. The mask design for Bishan is simply <laughs> badass. That's one of my favorite things about the book, actually, uh, from a visual standpoint, I should say. And yeah, uh, the character of Cory is gorgeous. I love her character and uh, her personality and her looks and all that stuff. Just a fantastic uh, designed book. Everything about it is A+, plus, in my honest opinion. Honestly, the only thing that I would say that I kind of wish would have been tweaked around maybe was the backstory on some of the uh, stuff in India because as because I don't know it but then again that shouldn't be an excuse because you're gonna tell me oh then you should do your research yes but comics can be a gateway for a lot of people and if you can present that stuff um, and introduce these conce uh, concepts to new readers that's even better so uh even though the story is fascinating fantastic political play and the romance between bishan and cory and the whole vampire stuff and the mythology and really the love for the land you see the love and attention that ram v has put into his script and how it takes it takes something that you know or you might have already known and elevates it and it's it's this massive love letter to a wonderful area a wonderful country and its people and uh it, it's uh really cool i i don't think i'm doing this uh book any justice at all with my review but gosh darn it i i sure tried uh, i i think it's a fascinating read uh, maybe some of the exposition for a few characters could have been tweaked a little bit better. But the dialogue is rich. It, it is of that era to me. It reads fantastic. And on further rereads, you are going to pick up more things. So I do suggest that uh, you keep going with the book just in case you maybe not uh, put on by uh, what the story is trying to tell just keep going uh, there are a couple fight scenes in this book which are fantastic and the dynamic artwork mixed with excellent scene uh, panels and all that the scene paneling and all that stuff um, just uh, blew my mind uh, especially the nine panel grid and how you see the action flow through the page so it's more like a interactive experience that was awesome i loved it the savage shores is pretty spectacular and i could see why a lot of people loved it when it came out uh if you get a chance uh do ahead do go ahead and pick it up it's only like 13 bucks or something uh 16.99 but you can probably find it uh, cheaper on sites like uh, amazon and stock trades stuff like that so yeah, uh, coincidentally, this is my first Vault Comics trade, so I'm really excited to check out more of their stuff. Um, what about you guys? Have you read The Savage Shores? Let me know down below in the comment section. I hope I did this book any justice. As always, guys, thank you for following me here on A Week in Geekdom. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the channel. It really does mean a whole ton. Thank you so much. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. I've got to go. I have more stuff to read, play, watch, and review for the channel, so I will catch all of you on our next video.